<laughs> Hi. All right, well, let's, uh, let's pray and go before the Lord, ask him to help me, help you. Uh, Heavenly Father, we just come before you, and we just thank you once again to be able to gather, to assemble together, to, to uh, bounce ideas off of each other, and to dig into your word, Lord, uh, that we would uh, not only have uh, riches in heaven, uh, uh, where, uh, where you go and lay up treasure for us as we uh, serve your people and, and do what you've called us to do, Lord, but may we have uh, riches here, Lord, and, uh, and have everything that you've called us to have. And uh, may we w be diligent, may we work hard, may we be wise with what you give us, Lord, because it all comes down to yours. It's all yours, and uh, we are just stewards of it. May we uh, continue to uh, be good stewards and that we would glorify you in all that we have, all that we do, and all that we are. And we pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> all right, so last week we went through the booklet, uh, one, uh, pages uh, 1 through 9, talked about biblical money management, talked about steps to success, talked about debt and credit cards uh, and how um, credit cards can kill you. Um, you know, they, financially, they will kill you. And so... Uh, cash is always better to use as far as how much you're going to spend. Remember, if you use credit cards, you're going to spend 15 to 20 percent more because you're not putting out actual greenbacks. So um, it makes a difference. If you're disciplined and you stick to your budget, then you can use credit cards, and there's some advantage to that, right? Uh, because we get points back, we get uh, uh, some of the credit cards will put money right in your bank account when you use theirs. Uh, and then uh, also uh, it gives you a ledger of what you spent also, uh, which you should, and then you can confirm that against your budget. <clears throat> so it's important, you know, that can be good. But what's our rule on credit cards? We pay it off when? Every month, Every month right? <clears throat> and then we talked about debt. You know, depending on how you look at debt and how uh, you feel when you, uh, to pay off debt, I say go to the highest interest rate credit card and pay that one off first, okay? I don't care how much is on it. It may take you a year, it may take you three months, it may take you a year, it may take you two years to pay that credit card off. But go to the highest interest one and go. Now, Dave Ramsey from Financial Peace, where I get a lot of this information, uh, the website Financial Peace, he says go to the lowest amount and pay that one off first. Because some people want to see that uh, see that target of paying that one off. So if you pay one off that's 300, then you go to the one that's 800, and then you go to the one that's 1500. So, <clears throat> you know, where it may be 15,000. Uh, that's how he says to do it. Do it however it works for you. Um, but for me, it makes, I'm always thinking about the in game. How can I save more money, right? So go to the interest rate, right? Some interest rates are 29% on credit cards. So you're paying one third, you're paying a third of a dollar for every dollar you spend. Think about that. You're paying 30 cents to the credit card company for every dollar you spend that you don't pay off every month. So you're basically giving 30 cents away every time you spend a dollar. Or if you spend $100, you're giving $30 away. That's a lot. That's a lot. So <clears throat> credit cards can really hurt. And so we need to use them wisely, wisely, right? Okay, uh, page 9. Some of your booklets may be page 10. If you've got a brand new booklet tonight, it's page 10. It's called Wealth Building. <coughs> so... <clears throat> we talked about the $1,000 emergency fund, right? It's not an emergency if the car breaks down and you have $1,000 in that money market account getting 0.45%, right? It's getting no interest hardly, and that's okay because it's there for emergency. When the kid, uh, kids fall and break their arm, uh, you know, and you got to go to the doctor and it's $100 for the ER, uh, the copay or whatever it is for you, you're not, it's not an emergency other than mom being worried about your son, right? Or your daughter. 
um, but it, it is not a financial emergency because you have that thousand dollars. So that that's thousand dollars that we pay off our debt, and now we're in the wealth building. And the next step is to build. Look there on your page. Uh, right under the wealth building, it says the next step is to build a disaster fund. This is increasing your emergency fund, the thousand dollar fund that you have, to three to six months of your expenses. How do we know how much that is? Anybody? How do we know how much three to six months of our expenses? We go to our budget, right? <clears throat> And we talked about that last week. You can make your budget. There's a budget sheet on the back of this. You can also uh, print one off of his financial piece. There's a lot of them out there. Um, so you can print one off of there. And so you can either do your uh, two to three months of uh, writing every single thing down that you, even if it's a 25 cent toll or whatever it is, you write every single thing down, or you just go off your budget. And, uh, and make a budget right off the bat, or you can do that for two to three months, and then make a budget. But you have to, you know, you have to cut some areas. We can't have everything. Um, I think there's a song out there that says, you know, you can't, you, you can't always get what you want, right? The Lord will give you what you need, but you always, you can't get always what you want. So we're going to make this three to six months of expenses. Let's start off with three months, okay? So say your expenses are five thousand dollars a month. Uh, for your mortgage, your, your tithing, your, um, your uh, insurance, the kids, you know, the health insurance, the car insurance, food, all those things, $5,000 a month. We need $15,000, all right? That is, what's that in case? In case the breadwinner in the house, whether it's the husband or the wife, uh, falls, breaks an arm, breaks a leg, um, you know, can't work for three months, you know, it's, it, it's, it's a hardship, but it's not a panic. It's not a disaster. You're not going to be behind on your mortgage or on your rent. You're going to be thrown out of your house if you have three to six months of emergency fund, right? So it's bad. It's not good, but it, it's not a disaster. You're not being thrown out. You're not, you know, you're not getting a three-day notice on your door for your renter. You're not getting uh, a um, foreclosure. You know, they're not starting proceedings for that. So, <clears throat> uh, important. The kids are still eating. The wife's happy somewhat, right? And, uh, and it is much better to do that. And then, uh, again, like that $1,000, now we're going to increase that up to whatever your three-month uh, expenses are. So, if, you're, if you live with mom and dad or you, uh, say, rent a room, you know, your expenses are probably a lot less. So you may only need to bump that up to a couple grand, you know, but you do need to do that. That is part of your wealth building. Look there where it says tithing. Tithing. I can't even say the word. <clears throat> tithing. Obedience brings blessings. We see that all through um, the Bible. What's Malachi uh, 3, 8 through 10 say? Will a man rob God? Yet you have robbed me. But you say, in what way have I robbed you? In tithes and offerings. You are cursed with a curse, for you have robbed me, even this whole nation. Verse 10, bring all the tithes into the storehouse, that there may be food in my house. And try me now in this, says the Lord of hosts, if I will not open up, or if I will not open for you the windows of heaven and pour out for you such blessings that there will not be enough room to receive it. You know, this is, uh, <clears throat> this is a, a principle in God's Word that you see from the very beginning, Adam and Eve, all the way through. If you are willing to give to God and be obedient, He is going to bless you. All right? There's no prosperity gospel. We don't give money to get money. But God will bless you in ways that you just, it may not be a $100 bill. It may be giving you a car that doesn't break down. It may be, you know, kids that, I don't know, the, the shoes just keep on going. You know, whatever it is, the Lord will bless you. And we don't, it's all God's anyways. So we need to act like that, you know, and we need to, uh, we, we would be very careful with that money uh, you know, and, and we should be very careful with that money. And so, um, but tithing is a blessing that I hope 
uh, each one of you uh, get the privilege to do, okay? And I, I'm going to just go off track here a little bit. <clears throat> I started out, I remember, at Calvary Chapel, Fort Lauderdale. Uh, we had bucket in the back just like we have here. I remember starting off with throwing a five every once in a while in there, right? If, if it was a good message and it hit me, uh, all right, you know, because I was a heathen dog and wasn't even saved yet. And uh, so I'd throw five in there, you know, and as I kept going, uh, you, you know, every once in a while, if it was a really good message and he was funny, I'd throw a 20 in there, you know? And then uh, I got saved, and, and we started going to a Bible study, and I started learning and hearing this word tithing, and, you know, not me, bro. I ain't giving 10% of nothing to God, you know? I'm like, there is no way I'm doing that, you know? That's going to the motorcycle. I got a career, you know, I'm racing. Uh, you know, that's spark plugs and gas. You know, we're, we're, not, we're not giving that much to the church. You know, I started off slow, you know, uh, hard to get that money out of my hand. $25, you know, a week. Uh, and just went from there. And then more and more, you know, as I became more obedient, I just saw continued blessing uh, that continued to come in. And so I've seen the principal work, uh, you know, what you... Uh, so is what you will reap, you know, and, uh, it, it, you know, now, um, you know, it's more than 25 bucks a week. So, uh, but I've seen God just bless, uh, you know, Alice would be, I don't, I don't understand. How do we have so much money? How, do, how you know, and this is back when I made $16,400 a year, you know. So, uh, you know, that was a while back, but God will bless you. And that, it, it's all about, uh, being faithful and trusting in Him. Will He provide all your needs? As it says in Philippians 4.19. doesn't say it will provide all your lattes and all that. He says, I'll supply all your needs, right? And so important that we uh, trust in Him. And that's really where it comes down to. We're, we're are in areas of your life, and each one of us have them. I still have areas in my life that, eh, Lord, uh, I want to give it to you, but, you know, if you'll give in that area of your life, God will bless you. And so, important to know that. Proverbs 3, 9 and 10, Honor the Lord with your possessions and with the first fruits of all your increase. So your barns will be filled with plenty and your vats will overflow with new wine. <clears throat> in investing, retirement, um, this is fun stuff here, you know, take 10 to 15 percent. So take the 10 percent, okay, give to God. He's going to bless you with more, uh, whether it's just wisdom or more hours or overtime or uh, whatever it is, He's going to bless you with it. And, he is, and then you take that 10 percent extra that you're going to get and invest that into your retirement, right? Look at that uh, right under uh, investing where it says number two, says this is the fun part. Get that? F-U-N-D, the fun part, like the mutual fund part or the ETF fund part. Uh, and so uh, that's what we're going we're gonna to do, a little chalkboard analysis here tonight, and we're going to learn the rule of 72, and then we're going to throw some money in there and see how that works. And so Matthew 13, 44 through 46 says... Uh, the kingdom of heaven is like a treasure hidden in a field, which a man found and covered up. Then in his joy, he goes and sells all that he has and buys that field. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant in search of fine pearls, who on finding one pearl of great value went and sold all that he had and bought it. <clears throat> you know, this is talking about the gospel. This is talking about the gospel, that he found the good news. And, but you don't have to go, it, it's free, right? It's the free gift of God. And so, uh, but you, God's going to bring blessings to you, and you need to be a, ready or in a position. There's a thing, um, missed opportunity. There's a, there's a thing that's called cost of missed opportunity. So sometimes it would be really good deals, and you won't be able to, uh, to go get those good deals because you don't have the money to do it. And that's okay. But it's a shame if you 
if the money went through your fingers and you wasted it, but you could have built it and made more money on it. Understand what I'm saying? So sometimes we waste money over here when we could have made an investment over here and made more money, right? And so that's where we have, you know, I think everybody should have a good time. And uh, what I tell all the uh, people that work, uh, come do work for me is I think everybody should make money. I just don't want you to make all your money off of me today, right? So, um, so when I feel like I'm getting ripped off, I give them that little thing, you know? And uh, it works, you know, I had an AC guy that uh, charged me $234 for a uh, thermostat. Thermostat's about 45 bucks at Home Depot. He charged me 230 bucks. I told him, I'm gonna buy a lot of houses and I'm gonna revamp a lot of houses and you can revamp your price on this thermostat and treat me right. This is the second AC company I've already used. Uh, you seem like a nice guy, but if you don't change the price, I'll pay you that $234, but you'll never see me again. You'll never, you'll do no more of my AC work. Those people, it's uh, 15 years later and they're still, still my AC people, you know, and uh, the owner of the company calls me all the time, Tim, we're going to get this, we'll do this for you, whatever, you know, so um, they've taken good care of me, you know, but it is, uh, we don't, we have to be careful with our money. We want to be wise. So the fun part. Uh, obedience brings blessings. Look at number three there. Obedience brings blessings on page uh, 11. If your work has a 401k, should you invest? Most definitely, right? If they match it, three or six percent, a lot of them do three or six, some do five, you should put in all that you can. Match them, okay? Free money is good, okay? We like free money. So, Free money. If you have, if you have a, uh, if you're at work and your work has a 401k, you should match it. If they do six percent, bite the bullet and match them. Okay. If you put in three percent, they put in three. If you put in four, they put in four. If you put in six and they'll put in six, put in six. You got to do that. That's free money, and you are. Uh, we're going to see the rule of 72, and you're going to see how fast it will help you gain. Invest early and often. Time is on your side and helps you accumulate wealth. Let's look at this. The rule of 72 is a simple way to determine how long an investment will take to double given a fixed uh, annual interest rate by dividing 72 by the annual rate of return. Investors obtain a rough estimate on how many years it will take uh, that initial uh, investment to duplicate itself. So let's take a look at this, right? All right, so say we are uh, making 6%. How long will it, how many years will it take us to make, uh, to double our money, right? Think about 72. 6 times 12 equals 72. So at 6%, it will take us 12 years to double our money. So if we have $100,000, Right, got a hundred grand. It's going to take us twelve years at six percent, and then we'll have two hundred grand. Okay, but let's do this. Let's change it around. Let's make twelve percent. Okay, I just checked it today because I wanted to give you guys. I made twenty-four point five percent in a mutual fund that I'm in this year so far. Could it could go to zero tomorrow? But so twenty-four. So let's just do this. Let's do. Um, 12 percent, okay, how long will it take us to double it? Right? Six years. That's right, Mr. Shannon. Six years to double that. Now, that 100 grand, right, goes to 200 grand in six years, okay? Now, in 12 years, if we keep it in there, we're making 12 percent. That's 400 grand. See how that grows? So every six, every six years, it will double. That's 400 grand. 12 more years, $800,000. Serious money, okay? So that's the rule of 72, okay? So if you're making 9%, it's gonna take you eight years 
to, uh, to, to double your money. So uh, it's important to know that, and that is fun, right? Because, you know, we can put together money, you know, it may only be 20 grand that we start out with, right? That member last week, the guy that put in $16,000 from the time he was 19 to 27, put it in, put in $16,000, $2,000 a year. Not much money, right? $160, $166 a month, I think it is. Um, <clears throat> so you put in $2,000 for eight years. Then you stop, but you leave it in there. It's making that 12% or 10% or whatever it's making, right? Which is pretty easy to do most times, right? So um, you put that in there. He had at 65, I think it was, 65 or 70, he had $2.2 .2 million. Just by putting $16,000 in when he was young, like DJ, like Tori, like a lot of you young people in here, right? So. It's important to start young, but if you're a little bit more mature, then it's okay, right? Colonel Sanders started at 67 because he said Social Security is not enough money to live on. So he said, and he went to a thousand different people before somebody took his chicken recipe. So just because you're a little bit more mature doesn't mean you can't start, right? Uh, at 24% interest, if you're gaining in a mutual fund, that's three years to double your money. Okay? So if you had $100,000 in three years, you have $200,000. Right? In nine years, you'd have $600,000, I think it is. So, um, you know, it, it can grow pretty quick, especially if you get a good spurt in the, um, in the stock market. It can grow relatively quick. But we're not looking for quick money. We're looking for steady. And uh, like that mutual fund that I'm in right now, I think it's a uh, growth in income. So it gets a dividend, right? And then there's all kinds of things. We're going to talk about that. So we talked about Colonel Sanders was 67 old, years old when he um, started pitching his idea for chicken. And he's famous, right? The Colonel. Compound interest uh, on page 12. Compound interest is in addition of interest to the principal sum of the loan or deposit. Or in other words, interest on top of interest. It is the resulting, the result of uh, reinvesting interest rather than paying it out. So you can either, in some stocks, like AT&T pays a 6% dividend, uh, Verizon pays a 6% dividend. Um, so uh, if you just bought Verizon stock and it pays, a five, I think, a 5% dividend, um, it will double your money in what, uh, 15, 14 years? 14 years, they would double your money. Just if the stock did nothing and just stayed steady, it would double your money in, in 14 years. Now, that seems like a long time, but, you know, I, I remember I bought Verizon in the 40s. It's at 60 now. So, <clears throat> you know, if you just, and that's what mutual funds and ETFs are for. You, I watch the stock market a lot, right? And I had a good mentor when I was young to teach me it. You don't have to do that. Just get an ETF that's a growth in income uh, or growth or for one of you young, uh, for some of you young people in here, get an aggressive growth, right? Buy small companies, you know, buy an ETF that does. Now we're going to talk about diversification. Here we are. Ver, uh, number six, diversif diversify or diversification. Don't have all your eggs in one basket. Look at Ecclesiastes. See how amazing the Word of God is. Don't have all your eggs in one basket. Who's ever heard that, right? Ecclesiastes 11.12 says, Invest in seven ventures, yes, in eight. You do not know what disaster may come upon the land. <clears throat> so it's important that you don't invest just in small stocks or just in big stocks. I suggest that you have three mutual funds and that one is growth in income, one can be growth, and one can be small stocks, right? Aggressive growth. And I have all those, okay? I, I invest in all those. I also uh, invest in international fund that I have. So it's important, <clears throat> and I'm not given, uh, you know, I'm not a financial analyst or any of that, you know? But what I would say is, um, come on in. What I would say is, 
you know, this is telling us to be diverse, you know, have your stuff in multiple mutual funds. Don't put all your money in your company 401k. Now you need to match it to that, whatever they'll match you. If they match you all the way to 6%, put it in there. But the, the rest of the money, right? We're going 10 to 14% of our money to, uh, for wealth. <clears throat> we need, excuse me, we need to invest the other four to 9% in other mutual funds. What happens, GE is a perfect example. GE stock was amazing for year after year after year. The last 10 years, that stock is like this, you know? I mean, it, it, it looks like, you know, just dropping, dropping, dropping. I mean, it went all the way down, I think, six bucks. It used to be a 50, 60, 70 dollar stock. So if you had your retirement in there <clears throat> and you had millions of dollars in GE, you don't have millions of dollars anymore right? You have hundreds of thousands of dollars. <clears throat> so that's why you don't put all your money in one basket, right? And we've all, we all know that, uh, you know, uh, tulips, you know, uh, were really expensive, you know, 250 years ago. Uh, Bitcoin went to $20,000 and it went back down to 3,000, you know? You don't want to do those things, you know? It is slow and steady. The turtle wins the race, the rule 72, compounding interest, slow and steady, wins the race. So you need to diversify. If you're handy and you uh, want to invest in properties, I, I think that's a great way to go. I do that. So I have some stocks and then I have properties, you know? Uh, and, and so um, whatever it is that you do, um, you know, it is, um, it is a good, you know, just do it. If God's blessed you, uh, you can buy and sell uh, stuff, you know, like we talked about last week, uh, then do that. You know, that's income. That's, that's investing. You're buying this for $10 and you're selling it for $20, you, that you're, you're killing it. That's good. And you just keep doing that. So you need to um, have, you know, a, a more, don't have all your eggs in one basket. So that's very, very important. Uh, because you can be wiped out. Uh, and uh, I, a lot of you heard this. Uh, my wife and I were uh, putting money or put money into a, um, uh, what was it? It was, well, it was a Ponzi scheme. Uh, my buddy was investing in it for years, made a lot of money, uh, you know, buying planes and boats and houses and all kinds of stuff, race cars, you know, 18 wheeler truck, all this stuff racing around the whole country with his son. Uh, and he said, Tim, you got to get in this. And I was always skeptical, right? Finally broke down and invested with this guy. Uh, he was doing currencies, uh, options on currencies, uh, showed that we were making $10,000 a month on paper. Uh, we had all this money in this account, right? I could have sold all the houses that I own, taken all the money and put it in there. You know what, on January 14th, 2009, you know what happened? Mm. He said, uh, sorry, all your money's gone. You know, it was a Ponzi scheme. He stole $44 million from people. And so uh, that, that account that we thought had $500,000 in it had zero. That's why you don't put all your money in one basket. And my buddy had taken $500,000 out in three hour time. Okay. I, and I, one of my best friends, he was my best friend growing up, still one of my best friends. He, and, and this is, I, I saw him taking money. I saw other guys that I knew that were taking ten to $20,000 a month out of that guy's account um, and using it to live a lavish lifestyle, right? So my buddy called him at 9 a.m. He had $500,000 in his account by noon. So I'm thinking, this guy's legit, right? It's all. And I watched it for five years before I got into it. Then I got into it. Five years after I got into it, that's when it crashed. So you have to be smart. God's word will lead you in a way that will help you when that disaster happens. When that disaster happens, there's another chair up here. Miss uh, Bianca's got one there. Yep, there's one there too. 
Um, but I think you guys are good. <clears throat> so that's why we don't put all of our eggs in one basket. Let me just tell you, and this, you know, I'm not tooting my horn, I'm tooting God's horn. My wife and I, $500,000 in an account, $10,000 a month it showed we were making. We still had a flip phone. We had one flip phone and we shared it, okay? We drove a, a, a white van that was, you know, just a Sienna van. Uh, I, at that point it was, uh, what, well, it was only three years old at that point. You know, I still had a 2001 truck, so I had an eight-year-old truck at that time. You know, we got the Sunday paper, that's it, because I didn't want to splurge for the seven-day-a-week uh, paper, right? So what I'm saying is God gave me the wisdom not to change our lifestyle. Now, we changed it in some minor ways, but we didn't go hog wild. And I'm telling you, that is God's grace. I went to that, uh, I went to the hearing for that guy, and I heard story after story after story of people refinancing their house to 90% and putting the money in this Ponzi scheme. Kids that had to come home from college, uh, you know, moms and dads that had to, you know, lost their, you know, like 80-year-old moms and dads that lost their home and had to move in with their kids. I mean, it, I, mean I was ready to throw up at, at this at the hearing, you know, when they was doing the sentencing, and every one of them went up there and talked about it. And I thanked God that he said, put it in seven ventures. Don't put it in one. Don't be stupid, right? Be smart. Put your money in a few different ventures, and, and, and then go from there, okay? So important. You, gotta, you, you don't know what's coming tomorrow. Job didn't know it. I didn't know it. You know, and my wife, praise God, you know, she kept telling me, you know, we should take that, the amount that we put in and take it out and just, you know, I'm like, no, honey, come on. I know money. Come on, baby. You know, uh, you know, I should have listened to my wife, you know. So when your wife has that feeling, take the money out, put it in the bank account, earning, you know, a little bit of interest. Don't risk it all. Um, two to four mutual funds is the way to go. Other ways to invest, buy a home, buy rental, buy a home, okay? I think we should all have the, uh, uh, the goal to buy a home, okay? Unless you move a lot or, you know, your job makes you, like some of these military people maybe doesn't make sense if you're only going to be in a place three years. But I think we should all strive to buy a home, okay? And so, because that's an investment, and we're going to learn here later that we want to pay that off, right? We want to pay our home off, and so uh, that's tax-free money. Listen, when you buy a home, and uh, you're a husband and wife, and you sell that home after you pay it off, and you've lived in it for 20, 30 years, and you sell that, or keep it, either way, but if you sell it, the government gives you no, you can pay no tax up to $500,000 profit. Okay, so you can buy it for a hundred grand, fix it up, live in it for twenty years, sell it for six hundred grand, and pay zero taxes. No capital gains, zero taxes, and that is a way to make money, you know. And then you can buy a smaller home and live out the rest of your life, you know, or buy a rental home and make money off of that. <clears throat> So uh, good to buy a rental home. I, I have rental homes, and it is awesome. It's a great way to minister to people. It is a great way to bless people. Um, and it can be a headache, uh, but in 30 years, I've had two evictions. So, um, you know, I had one house, 735 holes in the wall. That's the nightmare, you know. But you know what? It happened once in 30 years, 35 years. God's blessed me, you know. So... Um, that's one of the ones I evicted. And so he wasn't too happy with me, so he put a lot of holes in the wall. So, but they make patch, and we can fix that, you know. But, uh, you know, that house was a blessing. And uh, so, two. So it's not a nightmare. Not everybody's a nightmare. There's a lot of great people out there. Uh, I got to tell you, there, there are people that are just, will bless your socks off, even as a renter, you know. And uh, I, ha I have text message after text message saying, oh, thank you for being so gracious, you know, 
I have somebody that's behind on rent right now. You know, almost every month I have one. But, you know, you deal with it and the Lord provides and you just keep going on. And they're grateful. I, I make my people feel like that they'd be betraying a friend if they betrayed me because I try to treat them. Uh, Ramon knows. Ramon's been to a few of the houses with me. And uh, so, um, you know, Cedric is all excited that Ramon had a baby. So he knows Ramon, he, you know, because we painted uh, Mr. Cedric's house. So, um, so, you know, buying collectibles. Listen, if you know uh, comic books really good or baseball cards or stamps or coins, then do that. You can make money off of that also. So that's some go to estate sales. You know, if you know coins, then you have an advantage, you know. But don't, you know, be careful. You're not going to spend all your money, right? If you got 20 grand in the bank, you're not going to take the whole 20 grand with you, right? So you a little bit. Use other gifts and talents to invest, right? It's not only money, but tutoring, mentoring, start a business. What do we have to think about when we start a business? Got to count the cost, right? You don't want to start a business with no money and not have a plan. Now, if God calls you to do that business, and you, he's going to give you the plan, okay? And so you go from there. Uh, one, like I said, you see there in G where it says um, pay off your home. That's one of the greatest things you can do, and it will help you um, to make more money because when you don't have that $1,500 payment every month, Guess what? You're going to be able to invest more. You're going to be able to give more, right? So that's really a cool thing. We have somebody here in the front row where their house is paid off, right? So that's a, that's a fun thing when you can pay off your house and all you have to worry about is just the maintenance on it or uh, just the taxes and the insurance makes it a lot easier. And so when you sell that home, all that money is coming to you, right? Average home in Orange Park is about $200,000 right now. So uh, think about that. That's just the average. There's a lot that are a lot more, and there's some that's uh, a little bit less. So, all right, a step four here, it says on page, uh, where are we at? Page 13 on my booklet. Maybe if you have a brand new booklet, yeah, is on 13 also. So uh, mortgages, there's good debt and there's bad debt. Good debt is mortgage debt. If you have a mortgage debt and you're only paying 30 to 30, about 30% 30 of your income, that's good. Don't get into these mortgages where you got to put in, uh, you know, where you're at 50% of your uh, pay that you get every uh, month. You're, you're going to go into foreclosure and you're going to lose it. So uh, the good rule of thumb is about a third of your pay. Good debt is a mortgage on a house. Uh, other good um, debt is uh, technical or, or can be like technical school, stuff like that. Um, college education, some college education can be good. Uh, I really think uh, we're going to talk about college education a little while further down. Um, bad debt are loans that bring you uh, no yield or no return. Uh, even, I think auto loan an auto loan that you are smart about, uh, like I said last week, rich people think about how much it's going to cost entirely. People that aren't good with money uh, only think about the payment. I can afford this much. That's why now you see car loans that are like 72 months now, right? Well, we can make it $250 a month because we're going to make you pay it for like eight years, you know? So uh, be careful with that because you're paying a lot more in interest. So, uh, you know, if you can do without a car, uh, then do it. But if you need a car to get to work, and most of us do, it's good debt. But don't buy the Ferrari, you know, buy the Toyota, you know, Avalon or whatever, you know, whatever it is, Honda Accord or whatever, you know. <clears throat> so, right? Because most Christians buy because they're all in one Accord, right? <laughs> <clears throat> the Honda Accord, right? So, <clears throat> I've heard my pastor say that. So, uh, you know, don't buy the one all decked out and all that stuff. Buy, buy you know, the one that you can get by with, you know. Uh, you know, we don't need a Ferrari when we really only need a Volkswagen. So, important uh, that we don't go, you know, over, over our heads. So, 
uh, before you get into debt, much prayer and guidance, right? In a multitude of counselors, there is safety. So it's important. If you're single, have somebody that's a financial accountability partner, somebody that you know is uh, that you trust. You know, maybe go to a couple different people. Like when I go to buy a, a, a used truck in the next year, year and a half, I'm going to Victor because that's what he does. That's what he did. You know, he used to buy and sell. I trust him. You know, uh, I talked to Eric already. Hey, what do you think about the Fords, the new Fords? You know, I haven't bought a truck in 20 years. You know, I, I'm asking questions now because when my son turns 16, I'm going to give him that 20 year old truck that I drive or 22 year old truck at that point because when he crashes that I won't be heartbroken right and and hopefully he'll be safe in it right so but he's gonna crash it probably so I'm gonna give him the junker right don't go buy your 16 year old a Mustang that looks all zoopy and all that and all fast because what are they gonna do they're gonna drive fast in it and they're gonna get tickets or they're gonna crash so it's important that we uh, are smart in all these areas and all these areas it's like the Christian walk if you'll just inch up you know just work on all these areas of, uh, of our life areas of our life like our Christian walk we're gaining here we're gaining there we're becoming more graceful we're being more obedient we're being more disciplined here this part of our life you know we're, we're using good language instead of bad language where we used to use before right all those things add up to a sanctified life, right? Uh, a life that's glorifying God. Same thing in finances. It, it's gaining on it little by little by little. And then you look back and go, wow, I can't believe I didn't, you know, I, I, I don't even want that anymore. Or Christmas comes around and you're like, eh, I'll buy my kids something. I really, you know, I don't really need anything, you know? Uh, my anniversary was last week and I bought my wife a $17 bouquet of roses right? We've been married 26 years. I don't need to send her flowers that are $100, you know, and all this with a vase. I got a vase at home. I can go to, uh, I can go to Costco and buy 24 for $17, and they're just as beautiful, you know? And so, um, you know, and she was just as excited as if I would have had somebody deliver them and pay $35 for the delivery charge and $100 for the flowers. So um, be smart, you know, we, we don't, you know, I asked her to go out to dinner. Uh, I wanted her to take her to this new restaurant we heard somebody talking about. She's like, no, you know, we're, you know, we're doing dinner on Saturday night with some friends and, you know, Thanksgiving's coming up. Now, nah, I don't know, maybe next month, you know, it's like, man, content, you know, I just, you know, I love that. And that's, you know, you're gaining on it little by little by little. And by the next thing you know, you have money in the bank and you're like, wow, I'm reaching my goals. Number seven, mortgages. Getting a mortgage. If you're gonna, uh, if you're gonna get a mortgage, there's FHA, there's VA, and there's conventional. Um, VA costs a little bit more money sometimes because they have uh, uh, fees that go with it. But uh, some of the military people, you, it, there's a little bit of an advantage, but they are a little bit more costly. FHA, you only have to put 3% down. I always recommend put more down. You know, um, since, um, like I say there, you see there where it says 20% down is the best way to go. Why is that the best way to go? First of all, you're building equity in your home right now. Two, I heard it back there, less interest, right? If you're gonna buy a $100,000 home and you put 20,000 down, now you only have an $80,000 mortgage, right? So you're gonna pay less, you're gonna pay less um, interest. <coughs> and a uh, great thing is, especially since 2009, the um, insurance, um, I can't even think of what it's, uh, I can't think of the name of the insurance, but it's insurance in case you default, okay? Um, and it is about $150 to $200 a month on a loan. So when you put less than 20% down, uh, you pay that $150 to $200 a month for that insurance. Now you can't, that the, the bank makes you get that and you can't stop it. You used to be able, if you got a good deal and you waited two years, and you had an appraisal and you could show that you had 20% uh, equity in the home, they would let you take it off. Now it's the life of the loan. 
not allowed to take it off. And so you can get all the appraisals you want, want and they won't take it off. So you pay that for the life of a loan. So think about that. If you get a 30, huh? Is that PMI? PMI, yeah. Private mortgage insurance. Thank you. Private mortgage insurance. And so, like I said, you used to be able to take that off. Now you can't take it off. And it's the life of the loan. So think about that. $200 a month, that's $2,400 a year times 30. That's $80,000 that you're paying just in case you foreclose that it protects the bank. It does nothing for you. Nothing for you. <clears throat> so I always say 20% down. Now, it takes a little bit of time, but you want to save 80 grand? or you want to get in a house today, you know? And you have to decide that. Uh, I just was trying to, I was, I'm, I was looking at getting a loan, and the loan lady said, for investment property, if you put in 25%, we'll give you a lower interest rate. So if I have the money to put in that extra 5%, I'm gonna do it, you know? So uh, just ways that you can just gain on it, little by little by little, you know? Um, you want to buy the smallest house in the nicest neighborhood. We buy the biggest house because we want the extra rooms and all that type stuff, right? And, you know, for that once a year that we're going to do Thanksgiving, you know, my table won't fit in this, you know, and we don't want to, you know. Listen, buy the smallest house in the nicest neighborhood. I'm looking at a 2,100 square foot house in 3,000 square foot neighborhood right now. I just put in this offer. We'll see what happens, but I love doing that. So important that uh, that's the way to make money, okay? Smallest house in the nicest neighborhood that you can go into, okay? Gap insurance on page uh, 14. Gap insurance on four, um, page 14. Gap insurance is just uh, insurance. So if you buy a new car and you drive it off the lot, it's worth... $5,000 less the day you drive it off the lot. So you buy a $30,000 car, you crash it on the way home. You're gonna have to come $5,000 out of your pocket because they're only gonna give you 25,000 in insurance if it's totaled. So you buy gap insurance, which covers that gap between 30 and 25, okay? So if you ever buy a new car, and sometimes it's worth it because of the financing and stuff like that. But you want to buy gap insurance. God forbid you crash in the first year. This gap insurance, which is about $9 a month, I just bought it, or I had it on when we bought the new van. Um, uh, you know, it, it, and then I um, got rid of it. I just called a, six months ago and got rid of it. It's only nine, it's $240 I saved, but what am I doing? Little by little by little, right? Cable TV. Call your cable TV. Donovan will tell you how to speak to him. Donovan does that all day long. He'll tell you how to get $20 off your bill a month right now, right? $20 in your pocket is better than $20 in the cable, right? So, <coughs> um, so important. Um, as I see there, you see that nugget? Poor people ask how much are the payments. Rich people ask how much am I paying total? You need to start thinking how, how, what am I doing with God's money? You know, how can I have more money to give to God's causes and to glorify Him, right? College funding, 529 is a mutual fund plan. You can uh, start, if you, it's really important to start early. These are mutual funds that you invest in and can you, uh, be useful for any educational purposes. You can even use them for like pre-Ks and stuff like that. Now there's not a lot a lot of time that it gets to build up unless you started it, you know, maybe uh, Ramon's going to start it for the third and fourth child, you know. So, <coughs> um, you know, so it is uh, important that you start early. There's also prepaid college. The 529 is a little bit more, uh, you can use it in different ways, okay, a 529 uh, college fund. And all it is is just a mutual fund. It's just, it's designated a 529 plan. That's what it's called. And you just start investing in that. And by the time you know it, you know, a couple grand a year in there, and you have a lot of money for college for your kid. Um, think about that rule of 72. 
two grand every year, right? By the time he's 18 and he goes to college, that's 36,000. Now, if you've been making 10, 12%, maybe you got lucky, blessed, and uh, you made 20% one year, that added up, you know, 50, 60, 70,000 dollars in there, right? So, uh, and it's more versatile because you can go across state lines with it. None of that matters. If you get the Florida prepaid or wherever you're at, um, I have the Florida prepaid for my son. Uh, it's limited to Florida colleges. If he goes outside of Florida, he's, uh, it's only going to pay the tuition rate, whatever Florida's tuition rate is. So, uh, and other tips for college, apply for scholarships, grants. Uh, there's dual enrollment. Uh, if your uh, child is mature enough and uh, w grounded well enough, um, I think dual enrollment's okay. Uh, it's a lot on them, but uh, it's free college. So that has to be an individual um, decision between you and your child and, uh, and what, you know, what your finances are like. <clears throat> but it's a way that you can, uh, when, once they become a sophomore, 10th grade, they can go in dual enrollment classes and get college credits uh, and not have to pay anything. The books are paid for, everything's paid for. So you can have a two-year degree before you graduate high school. So that is one way to do it. Scholarships, great way. Um, community college, I believe in this. 80% of people who go to community college and then go to a four-year college, graduate. <coughs> graduate from that four-year college, okay? When they go right from home to that four-year college, you know, it's nowhere near 80 because it's party time, right? I'm away from mom and dad, and I'm going to sow my wild oats, right? Hopefully that doesn't happen with our kids, but they're going to do things that we don't expect them to do sometimes. And no matter how we raised them, and we should be raising them in the Lord, you know, they're a lot safer at home than they are there. There's a lot of peer pressure, uh, not only from kids, but from faculty and all that type stuff. We see what goes on in these, uh, some of these colleges. So community college, half the price, they can stay at home and go to school and get their two-year degree, way cheaper. Um, your kids should go, uh, if at all possible, should go in the state that you're in. If you go out of state, uh, especially if you live like you live close to the border, like us with Georgia, if your kid wanted, you know, had to be a Georgia Bulldog, Georgia Bulldog, they are going to spend three times more money there than they will in a Florida school because they're out of state tuition. So you pay about three times more. So go to the, go to a college, technical school, community college. Those are all ways to save money. You know, you don't need to have the, you know, the Georgia Bulldog emblem on your car. You can, you, you can buy it and put it on your car if you like them. Be smart. Pay, you know, pay the less money. Save. Uh, so in state, I got that. Uh, go to school close to home and live at home. Moms and dads, I know, you know, 18, you're looking to, you know, run around with mom around the house. But, um, you know, keep them at home. You can run around while they're at school. Um, students who work, uh, who, okay, students who work and go to college actually get better grades. I wouldn't have believed this, but I read uh, many reports on this, and uh, they actually get, uh, I think they're uh, not caught up in the college scene. They're not caught up in all the, you know, things that are going on. They're more disciplined. They actually get better grades. So all these kids that are crying about, it drives me crazy because I worked full-time and went to school, um, went to college, and my mom and dad paid zero for me. So um, I'm not bitter. I'm just saying it can be done. You know, all these kids that get this, they think it's free money, it's loan, you know, and they go and play whatever they play and have fun and drink and do all that stuff, and then they owe 50 grand when they get out, and they're like, oh, man, I got college debt, you know? I'm like... Well, duh, you didn't work the whole time. You were in there, you know. You, they need to work. And, uh, you know, I don't feel sorry for anybody that has college debt. That's an investment, um, and you should work, you know. And maybe you don't need to go to that college. I know a lot of people that want to go to these colleges where it's 20 grand a year. My son ain't going. 
I got the money and he ain't going. I'm not wasting money. You know, you can get just as good as the education online or, you know, in a community college. Um, insurance, protecting wealth is important. This is important. Um, you know, car insurance, uh, you know, protecting wealth is important. And we can do that through godly wisdom and by using insurance. Insurance is a way to transfer the risk, transfer the risk from us to the insurance company. It is important to get insurance to protect your property and your investments. Your car is an investment, okay? It doesn't really make, it's not going to be worth more tomorrow than it is today. So it's not an appreciating asset. It's a depreciating asset. And I try to only buy appreciating assets. But a car is kind of a necessity. Now, two cars is not a necessity. I know plenty of people in here that have had one car and they have a family and they only have one car. And so um, it can be done. Is it harder? Yes. So car insurance is to fix your car in case of an accident. Also, uh, there's normally PIP that's in with that insurance. And so uh, at least $10,000 uh, personal injury protection, it's, it protects you in a couple ways. So, because there's medical insurance with a car insurance, make sure you have that on there because uh, if somebody hits you and they don't have insurance and it's their fault, their insurance isn't going to pay because they don't have insurance. So now your insurance will pay your medical bills, right? Ten grand can add up pretty quick. And so important to have that. Um, I had car insurance. We got our van totaled uh, up here on 295 in uh, Collins here. And, uh, you know, the insurance company gave us $7,700 back. You know, if I didn't have it, now that van was 10 years old at that point. Um, uh, if I didn't have insurance on it, uh, collision, I wouldn't have gotten that, you know, but I had the insurance. Well, I was going to say, it's important to not just have a PIP. Yep. You need to have full coverage. That's right. Because if you have <clears throat> That's right. That's right. Don't be penny wise and dollar foolish. Penny wise, like, hey, I'm only going to spend $50 a month on insurance and not $60. I'll just get the PIP, right? That $60 covers your car. That truck, 20 years old, I don't know how much my truck's worth. But it's going to cost me, when I give that to Timmy, it's going to cost me $25,000 to go out and buy a used two or three year old truck, you know, for what I'm looking for. And so that truck may not be worth 20, 25 grand, but that's what it's going to cost me to replace it. So insurance might only give me five grand, but it's five grand more than I would have if I didn't have insurance on it, right? So we have to be smart about these things and car insurance can help people from stop suing you personally. They sue the insurance company and not you, okay? Homeowner's insurance, you know, homeowner's insurance up here is a breeze. I gotta tell you, my homeowner's insurance down in Fort Lauderdale, $3,000 per house down there, okay? The, the cheapest one, $3,000, okay? Up here, 866 bucks I think I pay at my house. You should have it. I've been to plenty of fires, and man, it's devastating to see somebody lose all their pictures and clothes and all that stuff. It's really, it's a bummer. It is devastating and heartbreaking to watch somebody lose all that and not have insurance, and I've seen it. I mean, I'm like, you don't have insurance on your house, you know? And the thing is burned to the crisp, and all their stuff's gone and they have no clothes. The Red Cross is gonna put them up for a week or so. And uh, <clears throat> you know, it's just, it's, uh, you know, it's terrible. So for 800 bucks, you, you have a house that's worth 100, 200 grand. It's smart to have insurance on it, okay? Um, you know, so you gotta have insurance. Uh, and especially nowadays, uh, you, you gotta have insurance. Uh, flood policy. You should have it on your own. 
Um, I don't have it on my rentals, but I do have it on my own house. It costs about $500 a year to have flood insurance. Uh, so important, you know, when uh, Hurricane Irma came through here and the water came up in my driveway, I didn't have flood insurance. I'm not in a flood zone. Well, guess what? It don't matter if you're in a flood zone. It can still flood. Pastor Allen and I went and uh, uh, people were in their house three weeks, built a beautiful home out in Middleburg in their house three weeks. Uh, uh, Hurricane Irma came. You can't see water from their house. Black Creek, you can't see it. You can see all around two, three hundred feet, four hundred feet, all around their property. There's no water. There's no marsh. There's no nothing. Water rose 30 feet. 30 feet and flooded the whole first floor of their house. And Pastor Allen and I were over there a week or three days after tearing out all the drywall of the first floor, all the wood. They didn't have insurance. They hadn't gotten insurance yet. They had just moved in. And, uh, you know, we went over there and worked, you know, our hearts out, you know, uh, for that family. And so uh, that family's coming to dinner on Saturday at my house, you know. Uh, they're still friends, and I think that that solidified that friendship. I barely knew them, uh, but when PA and I went over there and, and worked on their house, they were like, wow, you know, this is, this is a Christian community. There's probably, I don't know, 10 people that showed up over there. And so, um, but they didn't have flood insurance. Flood insurance for $500 a, month, a year, it, it, it covers up to $250,000 worth of damage, right? That's my whole house almost, you know? So uh, you need to have flood insurance, even if you don't live in a flood. I mean, unless you're on this high heel, hill, you know, and there's not many uh, high places in Florida, you need to have renter's insurance. If you rent, uh, the home, the uh, landlord does not have uh, insurance on your stuff. You need to get it on your stuff. So if you have a lot of nice stuff and you're renting, then uh, you probably need to sell. No, you need to uh, you need to get renter's insurance. Okay, because if you have a fire and it burns it all up, the landlord it's not his responsibility to replace it. Okay, so know that umbrella liability. If you, uh, if you have uh, more than just your personal home and you have a business and or rental property you, or biz, any business, you need to have uh, umbrella liability insurance policy. It's important. So uh, I have car insurance and I have $350,000 liability. So if I hit a Jaguar or something, they're not going to come after me personally. If they do, I have a million dollar liability policy. So one of my renters falls down the stairs and ends up suing me. I have a million dollars of liability insurance that says uh, they have to eat up that million dollars for they get to me personally. Okay. So if you have money, if you have a lot of money in a 401k or in stocks, um, that type stuff, this, uh, it costs me, uh, I think $741 a year to have a million dollar liability uh, insurance policy. So I have that. It covers all my properties, my uh, two vehicles, my home, everything. So if somebody was to try to sue me, they have to sue my liability insurance first. Okay? So important. That's how you uh, keep and hold on to your money. That's wisdom, right? And I only know that because other people have taught me this. Okay? Long-term disability, important that we have long-term disability. If you break a leg, you're at work, okay? This is like Aflac and other insurances. Um, long-term disability, if you're out of work for three months, you need that long-term disability to kick in. That pays you money, okay? And that pays your bills, so that's important. You don't want to get one that kicks in in a week because it costs you too much money. Right? You get the flu and they're going to pay you money. No. You want one that's, you know, three months. That's why we have our three months to six months emergency fund, you know, of money so that we have a long-term disability that kicks in at 60 or 90 days when we're out of work and starts paying our bills. Right? Pays food, pays a lot of things. So, really important. Uh, I had a friend who was a firefighter doing a training exercise. 
uh, uh, does all this uh, uh, rope rescue training. Uh, he went out of the window, thought he was hooked on, fell uh, six, uh, four stories. I think he fell four stories. Uh, you know, he was out of work for a long time. Um, I have a friend that I took care of, a famous racer, uh, doing a, 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 a race. Car broke in half at 250 miles an hour, half track. Uh, cut off his left arm and paralyzed him from the chest down. You know, he had long-term disability and he got workman's comp also. Um, so, uh, you know, if he didn't have those things, he would be, you know, he'd be in a heap of trouble, you know. Especially now it's 35, 30 years later that he, uh, that happened in 1990. So however long ago that was. So, um, you know, and he was a world champion on top of the world. If he didn't have that long-term disability and that uh, workman's comp, he, he would have been in big trouble. So important, long-term care. Biggest threat to anybody over 60 years old is long-term care, right? If you need to go in a nursing home or you need to have a nurse's aid, like my buddy, 24 hours a day he has care, right? He can't even brush his own teeth. Okay, can't go to the bathroom on his own. Have to do all that for him. I worked for him for five years, lived with him for a year doing all that stuff. So, um, you know, you, you have to pay people. They don't come for free, right? Uh, just like Mr. Don with Miss Loretta. See, the same thing. You think he takes care of 24 seven. We have people that uh, like uh, Miss Cynthia in the back that go over and take care of her some days. And uh, Miss Ushi here goes over and takes care of her sometimes. But Don doesn't get many breaks, right? So if you have long-term care, that can kick in and start taking care of that. Average um, stay in a nursing home, if you go in there, um, you know, it's five to $7,000 a month. And I've been in nursing homes. For five to $7,000, you go in and you gotta hold your nose because it stinks, it smells like not good, right? So uh, you walk in there at three o'clock in the morning, they'll knock you down almost, wow. So you need long-term care, okay? Uh, and that is a critical thing for, they will take your home, they will take your bank accounts, they will take everything you have, and you will lose everything. So that's a big risk, and they, uh, uh, financial peace, uh, university says that you should start looking at that around 60. If you're really healthy, maybe 65. Uh, I've looked at it because I just learned about it and uh, it scares me a little bit. So um, it's about $2,000 a year to get that insurance for when you're 60. So, um, you know, $2,000 a year is nothing when you look at six to $10,000 a month to take care of you in a nursing home, you know? And you can also have a nurse's aide come to your home and take care of you in your own home. So um, that gives you the flexibility to do that, okay? Because they'd rather take care of you in your own home as long as they can because it's way cheaper, okay? So it sounds like a lot of money, $2,000 a year, you know? But when you're 60 and we've done the rule of 72 and we have a little cushion, we have some money in the bank, not that big of a deal, right? We're chipping away at this stuff, month by month, year by year, right? Okay, budgeting resources, 812 right now, let me see anything else. So uh, uh, creating a budget is good only if you set spending limits, right? I'm gonna give you the whole thing, how to be rich, okay? Spend, yeah, write this down. Spend less than you make. Spend less than you make, and you will be rich. Um, use the following budget guidelines to help you create your budget. Keep in mind, this is just a guideline, and ultimate goal is to be able to reduce your spending in order to have the financial freedom that will allow you to invest in the kingdom. So you may even increase your spending, right, in certain areas, right? You may give more to God, you may give more to poor people, you may uh, be able to help that uh, person. You know, we dropped off a dinner on the way here tonight, right? So, uh, you know, 
you know, five dollars it costs or ten dollars it costs to make the meal, big deal. But right, we're able to do that, right? And if she needs another one, I told her, call us back. We'll bring you another one, you know. So uh, it's that blessing to be able to do that and to see that smile on that person's face, uh, face that brings uh, a joy to being able to give, right? So uh, look at these things. Let's go down this list. Tithing 10%, right? That's what a tithe is. Saving 10%. Housing 30%. So that's not just your mortgage. See, that says taxes, insurance, utilities, phone. You know, I would even let you get up to, say, 35% on your housing, depending on, you know, are you making a, a you know, especially if you put that 20% down, now you're not paying that PMI, that $150 to $200 a month in that PMI. Now you can, uh, you know, have a little bit more um, total food, 12%, right? And that's always fluctuating, right? And not going down very much. Automobile, 10%. Right? You shouldn't have a $700 payment, you know, if you, you know, unless you really can afford that. Jim? Yes, ma'am? Just so you know, the new book has how to live different. Okay, yeah, let me look at that in the new book. Yeah. Okay, so in that new book, if you're on uh, page 17, which are, they're both on 17, uh, it has it all kind of broken down there with that housing. So important to look at all those things. Um, you know, so I like, I like the older version here where he just, you know, PA just put it right out there, right? Uh, auto price, maintenance, gas, tags, taxes, insurance, you know, uh, debt, not housing should be about 5%. But listen, if we're in the debt mode, if we're in the debt consolidation or debt killing, right? Snowball is what uh, he calls it. Uh, in Dave Ramsey in the financial piece. If we are trying to pay off that debt, we're trying to cut all these and put as much money as we can towards those credit cards because they're going to kill us. That's 30%. Even if you're in a mutual fund and you're making 15%, you're still losing 15%, right? So you got to, you know, any money that they'll match, I say keep going. But if you're putting money away in retirement, and you're paying 30% to the credit card company, stop unless they're matching you. Go to the match, because it's free money, but stop everything else and pay off those credit cards. Got to get the credit cards out of the way. They are killers, and they will kill your financial freedom. Okay? Uh, clothing, medical, dental, right? All these little things you see on here, entertainment. Listen, unless you're going to be a hermit, Right? Not Hermin, but Hermit, right? <coughs> Somebody got a jab back there. Um, uh, you're going to go out every once in a while, right? You're going to take your beautiful wife or friend or whoever, family member. You're going to go out and have some food or a cup of coffee, okay? And you should, all right? You work hard. But uh, so you got to put it on the list. Don't think, oh, I'm never going to go spend another dollar on any fun, right? Um, we don't want to be that way. Um, clothing, all right, ladies, we don't need to buy something new every week, right? <laughs> and Salvation Army has nice stuff. Um, health and wellness, right? Try to take advantage. If you live in an area that has a gym, like I, I live in a area that I pay a lot of money for the gym. I, I'm using the gym now, finally, you know. Uh, Timmy and I are using that gym. We pay $3,000 a year in maintenance fees. I'm going to use the gym, you know. Um, I know other people that go to a gym. They live in our neighborhood and they drive past the gym and over to whatever fitness place and pay more money, you know. I don't get it, but, you know, it's their money. They're not asking me for it. So... But uh, child care, too, that's a lot, especially for you guys uh, that have younger kids. Child care can really cost, so you got to make sure. You're, uh, on the back of your uh, sheet is that budget, okay? So important, and I want you to be thinking about questions that you're going to give me here. But grossly monthly, uh, gross 
monthly income. Hopefully your gross monthly income is not gross. Okay. <clears throat> uh, so uh, hopefully it's, you know, good. So your monthly income goes there at the top, salary, interest, dividends, other income. Something I was going to say about dividends. If you have dividends, try to reinvest them and buy more stock. Don't take that dividend and go spend it, you know, on whatever your pleasure is, right? Reinvest it if you can. And, you know, that 5% at Verizon, it's going to buy another share once a year. It's going to buy the third share in two years. It's going to, you know, and it's, you're going to start building more and more and more. And uh, I've seen that, you know, uh, they even have dividend reinvestment plans. They're called DRIPs. And that's what, that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to drip our way to an ocean of money, okay, and an ocean of contentment, right? Not only in our Christian walk, but in our finances. So we're letting that 5% drip into our account and then taking and, and then keeping that in our account and buying more stock and more stock and more stock. That's how you do it because dividends pay are good, right? Try to keep your money in a money market, uh, not just in, uh, once you get a little bit of money, you can take that ten to $15,000 or that three to six months emergency fund, put it in a money market fund. That's easy to get to, but you still get a half a percent, one percent, you know, so that's good. Uh, then you have to look at uh, going down this sheet, tithing, giving, all right, so important. Uh, taxes. And, and I say that's important, not you know because I'm an elder at the church. I say that because you're going to be blessed more than you ever thought, asked, or imagined. And when you give, you have a whole new perspective on money, on God, and you're showing uh, the trust that you have, right? The, the lady with the two mites put her money in there, right? And, uh, and so she trusted that God was going to take care of her. Uh, taxes. So there's your spendable income, monthly living expenses, houses, housing, um, you know, all this uh, sanitation. You got to think about that, right? My water bill, $80 a month at my house. $80 a month for garbage and water. So I don't know what your guys is, but don't forget to put that in there. You know, gas, I pay $600 for gas uh, twice a year at my house. Because I have a gas oven, gas, hot water heater. Right. Yeah, so, um, you know, don't forget that. You know, that's $100 well, a month I pay in, uh, in gas. So, you know, put it all down so that you're not like, oh, man, you know, and that's okay. But that's why uh, when Alice and I met 30 years ago and we're married 26 years ago, um, that's why we, sp we put everything down, everything we spent. Buy a candy bar, put it down. 25 cent toll, put it down. Everything, three months, right, in a notebook. And then we could see, man, we spent a lot of money here. Well, uh, you know, oh, man, I forgot to put the water in the budget. Uh, we didn't, you know, we didn't have it there. So now I knew exactly what we spent. And then we shaved off a few things. Do, can we bring our lunch instead of uh, spending five bucks a day at Subway or wherever, you know, we're going to be? Or ten dollars a day, right? Food, you know. Uh, try to get a handle on that, you know. Try to get those bogos, those coupons, you know, all those things. My wife clips coupons. She's a great bogo shopper, and uh, her and Gigi have fun uh, with that. And they get those coupons, ten dollar off. Publix has about once a month, uh, ten dollar off gas cards, right? I love gas cards because I don't have to put my credit card in that thing. Me trying to figure out, is it a skimmer or is it not? You know, is this one that's been messed with? I put that, uh, I put that um, gas card in there, mobile or racetrack, whatever, on Wawa, you know, and I put it, I don't have to, all they, you know, it's a $50 card. I don't really care. You know, you can buy a $25 card. But at Publix, if you buy $50 worth of groceries, right, 50, yeah, $50 worth of groceries, you can buy a $50 gas card for 40 bucks. Okay, it gives you a $10 coupon. So think about it. I go to, I don't even go to, well, I go to Costco, but I don't fill up there. Because if I spend, if the gas is 10 cents cheaper there, 
and I get 20 gallons, that's $2. I can save $10 at Publix on a gas card. I'm saving $8 more, getting $8 more gas. That takes me 50 miles more. You know what I'm saying? That you creep on it little by little by little, just like our Christian walk, right? Last week, we would get mad at that. This week, you know, we're not mad, <laughs> you know, may not be happy still, right? You know, when trials come, last month, we didn't have joy. This month, the trial comes, you're like, no problem, Lord, you know, we're inching it day by day. And finances, it's no different. It's just like the Christian walk. Insurance, insurance I talked about. Uh, disabilities, insur uh, long-term disability is important. Um, take care of your dental. You know, a lot of people don't look at that, but it affects your health very badly. Uh, you're more susceptible to heart attacks and strokes when you have periodontal disease. So you need to go to the dentist once a year and take care of that because I know it can be expensive, but we, if we budget for it, it's not that expensive. So very important uh, for our health also. Debts, entertainment, recreation, you know, we need to look at all those things, clothing, savings, medical, dental, um, uh, medical. I was paying for you that, uh, especially in, in this environment, um, I was paying $60 a day when I got out of the fire department. 31 years of service. The commissioners, they do six years, they get it for free. I serve 31 years and you still pay $1,860 a day. I was paying $60 a day, uh, so $1,823 a month, I think it was. I was paying $60 a day insurance for three healthy people, pretty much. Um, we went to, we did that for about two years and I said, oh, we got, you know, and I was checking it out, I was asking around. There's uh, Christian sharing plans out there, Samaritan's Purse, Health, uh, Christian Health Ministries, and uh, I can't think of the other one. MediShare. MediShare, yeah, that's on the radio a lot. So there's Christian sharing things out there. Now we pay uh, for unlimited, right? There is no limit. Um, uh, we pay $538 a month, okay, with Samaritan's Purse. And uh, my wife got a cancer thing on her leg, it was $1,200 to take off and take care of. They paid the whole thing. Now, it doesn't pay for like uh, anything under $300, it doesn't pay for. But we don't have to worry about that because we have our emergency fund, right? So we don't have to worry. We got $1,000 in the bank, so we don't have to worry. So I save $1,300 a month by going with Samaritan's Purse than I did with my own insurance um, through Sunrise Fire Rescue. And so, um, you know, and, and so, you know, if you have one with your work and it's really good and you're happy with it and all that, then stay with it. But there are ways out there to save money. Um, I'm not saying it's, you know, I haven't used it a lot. We've only had it for a couple of years. But like I said, in the first three months that we got it, she got a, a cancer thing on her leg and they had to do surgery on it and uh, they covered the whole thing. And so, uh, you know, it's something to think about with healthcare costs the way they are. Um, let's see, anything else? You ladies, those cosmetics, you know. Listen, God made you all beautiful already. You don't even need to worry about it. Uh, so just look at all that stuff. Don't forget about, um, you know, that, that bottom row there, beauty, barber, laundry, cleaners, allowances. Uh, make sure your kids, that you're giving them allowance, okay? They got certain chores around there, but give them allowance because they need to know how to use money now, right? I know it's hard, but you know what? Tell them no. Tell them no, and, but also uh, give them allowance and then make them, you know, divide it up. Uh, my son has four envelopes, and he um, uses those envelopes uh, for when he wants to buy something. Uh, matter of fact, today, he went and got a haircut. I said, we're using your credit card today, pal. So I got him a credit card, 14 years old. He's got his own credit card, right? So now, why, why do I have to pay for it? Well, I'm not going to make you pay for it, but I want you to see. When you get a haircut every three months or whatever, whenever you get it, it costs money, right? So when it comes in, you're going to see 
that it's, it'll be on there, you know? You know, all these things, these games don't appear out of the blue. They cost money, you know? And so, uh, with my foster kids, it was so amazing. Mr. Tim, Mr. Tim, can we get this? Uh, yeah, you got your allowance money? Uh, I don't want it that bad, right? <laughs> but if I was paying for it, they were all for it, right? 55 foster kids, and they were all for it. But you say, and we gave them allowance. If they, you know, sometimes they'd go for it. And when that allowance ran out, that's all they were getting. You got enough to pay for it? Oh, man, you're short 30 cents? Oh, the bank's closed. Sorry. <laughs> you know? Because, listen, if I let them borrow it from me, what are they going to do? When they're 18, when they're 24, when they're 30, they're going to want to borrow it for the 30000 because they only got 26, right? So we got to teach them. Let them fail now. Let them learn how to use money now when they're young. And they won't fail when they're, they're older. They'll be much more attuned. So, so important, so important. Um, any questions? Questions on any of these things tonight? Insurances, college, Rule 72. Anything? Anybody? Can I borrow some money? <laughs> yes. Can you give me some? Uh, yeah, you can borrow some money. <laughs> Let me show you that rule 72. <laughs> It'll cost you. It'll cost you. Any questions? Diversify, diversify, diversify. Right? If you have a business, don't put all your money in your business. Right? Get it up and running, but have other things. Because the way things are changing today, you, you know, uh, Netflix is a great thing, right? Who in here has Netflix? You guys are wasting your money. All right, no. Um, you know, Netflix may be out of business in five years. I know you think it's hard to believe. I remember when I said when Dixie would be close to being out of business. I remember when uh, Blockbuster, right? Kmart and Sears, when they merged, I said it's like two sick dogs, you know? They're like, they're on their last leg, right? So, yeah, they're, they're just about done, you know. So you think that your business will be there, but I, I think, mark my words, five years, Netflix will be gone because all these other people are doing what they're doing now. Disney just came out with a thing, you know, Hulu and all these different things. Roku, what's it called? Roku? Roku. You know, you can tell I don't have it. Um, so, yeah, all these things. But I think, I think Netflix will be gone in five years, you know, because it's going to be they're going to be overrun because they don't they don't have they don't have they don't have content right they can't make they got to buy and they spend billions of dollars on content well guess what disney just pulled all their content off of netflix because they're putting it on their own right so that's why you got to ha you got to diversify that is the key uh to all to to investing is to diversify, diversify, diversify. Okay? Amen? Amen? No other questions? So, with the college fund, if the kid doesn't go to college, what happens with that money? Yeah, great. With a 529, um, you, get to, you can just use it, okay? And uh, you have to pay tax on it. Uh, the good thing is you only have to pay, uh, and with a 529, you can, uh, the money that you use, you use the principal and you don't have to pay tax on it. Once you pay, once you get any more than the principal that you put in there, then you have to pay tax on it. So also with a prepaid, you get back, and I think they pay you like three or four percent interest if your kid doesn't go to college or something happens and they don't use the college. So important. Foster kids can, uh, I think, go to school for free up to 24 years old. They get free college. So. Uh, if anybody has a foster kid, free college, push them towards that. Adopted so kids Adopted kids too, that's right. So uh, important to know that. Um, something else I was going to say. Oh, catch-up clause for us more mature people in here. Uh, you can put up to $7,000 in an IRA um, to catch up. So if, say uh, you got a lot of money back in your taxes come February, March, you know, Fill your IRA first, then go out and buy, you know, whatever you want to buy. But fill that IRA. You can do a catch-up thing 
especially if you're 50 years old or older, you can invest $7,000 uh, in that uh, IRA a year. So um, you get to, you can catch up, you know, you can put more in there than you normally would be able to. So uh, I think it's only $1,000 more than uh, you normally can put $6,000 in there. So, and if your company matches you, what do you do? You put the full match in, right? If it's $2,000, put $2,000 in there. If it's 4,000, put 4,000. I mean, you do everything you can uh, I mean, eat peanut butter and jelly if you have to. That's free money, and that will help you be rich. Any other questions? Um, another question. So say you have more than one buyer, and you get a contract for one, and that contract is for $1,000. Mm -hmm. Is that the same for everybody? Yes. Yep. You can. Yep. Yep. Yeah. And check all those things, but yes, you can. Um, you know, you have to... You know, like uh, they just raised that catch-up clause uh, this year for that, um, for the seven thousand dollars. So, and so, yeah. Um, any other questions? I just called uh, my retirement thing today because I have one account that has a four hundred one k and one that has a four fifty seven. I wasn't sure when I went on there and tried to. I was looking at it. I wasn't sure if I could cash out that four hundred one k, not cash it out, but take it out of the mutual fund that it's in. Um, you know, and wait for a bit, a little pullback here that we're going to get in the stock market and then reinvest it. Um, so I wasn't sure. So I called them today and asked them, you know, so take advantage, you know, if your company has a 401k plan, call those people and ask them questions. You know, they're smart. They went to school, you know, just double check it. You know, you want to ask two or three people and make sure. You know, then get on the internet and do a little bit of work and make sure. So I called them today to make sure I could do that because I don't want to get hit with taxes. You know, if I took it out, of, and I'm not taking it out, I'm just selling that mutual fund and put it into a money market, and then I'm going to wait for the pullback that's coming. So um, may come, may not come, but normally the market will pull back. Anything else? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Appreciates more. So that $200,000 house in the $300,000 neighborhood, because you bought the smaller model, um, will uh, appreciate more than the other ones. Plus, uh, houses that are smaller square footage sell for more per square foot. So like a $3,000 house, I mean, 3,000 square foot house um, may sell for $100 a square foot. A 2,000 square foot house is going to sell for $110, $120 a square foot. Because once you get over 2,500, 3,000 square feet, it really doesn't matter. So you don't get any more for that lot more square footage, you know. So um, that's why I try to stay under 3,000 square foot houses. I'm even trying to get rid of two-story houses where I just buy rental homes that are one story, 2,500 square foot or less. And so I'm trying to buy in the best neighborhood, smaller house, better neighborhood. So that's important for resale, but also, um, you know, for the appreciation. Well, that, that's what I'm looking for, the appreciation. So nicest house, smallest house in the nicest neighborhood. Don't go to a neighborhood where you can get a 3,000 square foot house. Go to a 2,000 square foot house. Make your kids bunk together and, uh, and it'll teach them to share. And, and then you'll have more appreciation. And when they're gone, you know, you, you don't have that big house and all the bills that come with a big house, right? So they'll, you know, the years, the days are long, but the years are short. You know, my son, five years, will be out of the house, going to college, doing his thing, right? Hopefully get married to a godly woman. So any other questions? So when you buy a house and then you sell it, if you hold on for it to two years and you sell it, any money that you make off of that is tax-free if it's under $500,000. $250,000 for a single person, $500,000 for a married couple. So, so you got to it two years. Two years, you got to hold on to it. Yep. Yeah. That's right. 
And so what I do with rental property is I sell houses in Fort Lauderdale that I own and I buy houses up here. So I do a 1031, which is basically the same thing. I sell a house down there. Within 45 days, I buy another house up here um, for the same price or more. And, uh, and I don't have to pay capital gains. So a house that I bought in 1987 for 54000 that I sold for 165000 down there, I bought a four, uh, five bedroom, three bath house here on a lake in, in Orange Park. And I never had to pay the capital gains on that, which would have been about 28% that I would have had to pay on that house down there. But because I, you take advantage of uh, 1031, it's called a 1031 exchange, right? And so I buy that and now I can buy that. And that, I just did another one um, a month ago, two months ago, did that. Sold a, house, a little condo down in a nice little condo down in Fort Lauderdale, bought a, a nicer condo up here. Two bedroom down there, three bedroom up here, right? And now I get a nice lady in there and she's paying me rent. Anything else? Yeah, so, so basically, in order to get that tax break, we got to put that money right back in. Place. Nope. Don't have to do anything with it. You put it in your pocket. But the 1031, you have to do it within 45 days. You have to buy another. You have to designate. I don't want to get too complicated. You have to designate three homes within 45 days and then purchase one of those three within 180 days. That's a 1031. But when you own your home, or have a mortgage on it, you sell it for more money, you put that money in your pocket. You don't have to do anything with it. And it's tax free. All the way up to 500 grand. So think about that, that's, that's a lot of money, right? So somebody that has their house paid off, you know, as prices go up, you know, you wanna move into a smaller house? Maybe you don't, maybe you wanna stay in that house. But when you sell it, you know, um, you know, or uh, listen, it says that uh, something about inheritances in, uh, in uh, a, a godly person uh, builds an inheritance for their children, right? I want my son, if he wants to be a pastor, I don't want to have to think about money. I want him to think about the Lord. So if he wants to be a pastor, I'm going to give him a house that's paid and clear, and I'll even pay some of his salary or I'll give him some money, so he, if he wants to be a pastor, um, he's gonna, be, he's not gonna have to worry about money. And so I'm, that's, uh, I never got to be a pastor, so that's something that I am going to hopefully see my son fulfill. So that's a goal that I have, that I hope, you know, he can fulfill. But it's his, it's his thing, not mine. But I'm gonna have the money to do it, hopefully, for him. So, um, yeah, so. You know, it is that you got to take advantage. You know, we 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 uh, give a hard time to rich people that take advantage of these taxes, but man, that's that's how you get rich. That's how you stay rich is by taking advantage of these legal tax things, right? I don't want to pay more taxes than what I have to. You know, I think I'm better with my money than they are with my money, right? So, <laughs> right? So. You know, take advantage of these things, you know, and that's why you want to buy now and sell later, you know, buy low, sell high, you know, but a home is a home, you know, and it's a home because you live in it and because you make it a home and because you have God at the center of your life, you know, and God's going to bless that. And so when you sell that home, that money goes in your pocket, you know, Maybe you want to be a missionary later in life. Maybe you want to be evangelist. You have an evangelist heart, you know? So I could see that with you, you know? I didn't have that advantage with my mom and dad, you know? But I'm hoping that Timmy will have that. And so any inheritance that we can give our kids, the best one that we can do is raise them in the Lord, you know? I hear a, uh, I hear a teenager talk about a stepdad how uh, amazing he is and what a change he's made in that son's life, you know? Man sitting in this room, other young man sitting out there, you know? And I see that and I hear that that's an inheritance. That's better than money, you know? I want to give my son both. I want to give him the Lord and I want to set him up to do whatever he wants to do, 
You know, it better be of the Lord, though, or he ain't getting nothing. <laughs> and so let me give, I'm a, uh, real quick, wills. A will is important. Wills and uh, trust are important, but a will is a necessity. If you have kids, you got to have a will. Because where, you're, where is your kid going? If you have a house that you own, you need to have a will. Because what happens? If you don't have a will, there's going to be a fight over it. And the government may get it, right? If you don't have it designated to where it's going to go, the government. Let me tell you, probate can cost, so if it's a million dollar estate, it can cost up to $60,000 to settle that probate, right? And what do lawyers do? They drag it out and they suck that money, right? Because they get paid $250 an hour and they charge you up to 6% of whatever your estate is. And it drags on for months, it can take six months for the average um, probate to go through. So if you have a will, that stuff goes a lot quicker. Whoever's going to take care of your Kids, it should be designated in there. Living will, uh, if you were to uh, be in Loretta's position and have a terrible accident and be on life support, what do you want to do? Do you want to pull the plug or do you want to continue to be uh, resuscitated? You know, uh, those are all important things that we should plan out now so that our kids don't have to anguish over these decisions. And so, uh, you know, a trust uh, will keep it out of probate. If you have a, a trust, not a living trust, but a trust, uh, we have all of our properties in a trust. So when Alice and I die, none of that will be public. It's all private. And that will and that trust um, will go into, uh, it goes immediately into that trust. The bank accounts immediately go. So nobody knows how much money there is or how many houses, or any of that stuff. And none of it's public. When you die and without a will, it's all public, and they put it in the newspaper, and all that stuff. So, and it's all fought over. Have intestate succession on her death bed. What's that? Intestate succession. Mm-hmm. Yep. And that it goes to our spouse, children. If there's no will, there's usually laws that decide. There are some laws. And that's, that's what probate's for. That's right. So uh, say you are married and you die, then your husband or wife gets it, right? But if there's no husband or wife, no spouse, then uh, probably kids. And then, uh, you know, goes on. And we see that, you know, they're siblings, and then you got siblings fighting. I want it, he want it, you know, all this stuff. Then you get the great aunt and the uncles and everybody that's involved, right? They all come out of the woodwork and they're fighting and everybody hates everybody by the end of it and now we spent half of that money now you got to sell that house because you don't have enough money to pay, pay the probate lawyer uh, you know uh, a state tax same thing uh, the guy that owned the Miami Dolphins when he died why he didn't have proper paperwork his estate uh, they taxed him at 45 percent so the Miami Dolphins he had a hundred and fifty million dollar tax bill he had to sell the Miami Dolphins, or he didn't. He was dead, Joe Robbie, right? He, his kids had to sell it because, um, because they didn't have enough money to pay for the Miami Dolphins, right? They sold it at dollars, you know, cents on the dollar, and uh, Wayne Huizinga bought them. You know, they've never been the same since, that, since they were sold. That's an estate tax. Right now, you don't have to worry about that until $5 million, but... You invent something or you make some internet thing, you'll have five million dollars, right? So it's not that hard to make nowadays. You know, I know you guys think I'm crazy, but you come up with a great idea. God gives you something and you go with it. Five million dollars could come like that. You know, you see these 20 somethings, you know, invent some Facebook. You know, it's a 90 billion dollar company. You know, guy started in his dorm room, you know. Ain't no smarter than you guys. Got the same brain. You know, God gave, you know, all gave us a brain. So don't, don't shortchange yourself, you know. Um, so wills are important, you know, really important. 
It costs a little bit of money to do. You can actually do it online. There's some online stuff, you know, set it up. Even if you got to write it on a notebook paper and have some friends sign it and put it and make a copy of it and give it to somebody that you trust. Actually, um, Alan and Gigi, <coughs> Pastor Alan is my uh, second executor. My accountant's my first one. Uh, the Lairds would take Timmy or uh, the Victors would take Timmy if uh, we were to die. I don't want them with my heathen dog family. You know, I want them with Christians. And so that's more important to me than him being with, 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 uh, with my family members that, that don't go to church. It's more important that he be with people that uh, love him, that love him, but also that are going to teach him in the ways of Christ. So if not, if I was to die without a will, if Alice and I were to die without a will, which we have one, they, he would go to one of my family members that don't want nothing to do with Christ. You know, I don't want that. And so, you know, I spent money to make sure that that's clarified. So important. So especially you that have kids, I think it's, you know, I know it's, you know, going to cost you, well, it won't cost you that much if you do it online or if you do it on notebook paper, you know, have a couple people sign it. It'll hold up in court. Date it, sign it, video it, you know, put it on a, uh, on a thumb drive and, you know, keep it protected, but give it to a couple close friends that you trust. And, you know, when, if God forbid you were to die, you know, your kids are protected. Important, important. What, what's more valuable than that, than our kids, right? That's planning, okay? Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we just come before you and thank you so much for your word and how it teaches us and how it gives us wisdom and that, uh, that you've taught us to, to what we sow, we will reap, Lord. And uh, if we sow goodness and we sow um, good habits and discipline, that we will uh, reap a harvest, Lord. And uh, I just thank you for showing me this and giving me um, uh, your word and helping me to, to be able to disseminate this information and uh, we just thank you for those that are here. We ask that this information would sink into our minds and our hearts and that we would go and be doers of your word and uh, doers of uh, the 2,350 verses that are in the Bible about money and stewardship and, and, the, and, and investing. And so may we, uh, may we start with that first principle of, of giving to you and, uh, and sowing and reaping. And so we thank you and praise you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.